on this computer. All right. And here comes Lem and Ms. Barry. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hey, Lou. Hi, Ann. Hi. Ann, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Just as nasty as ever. <laughs> I've been having email problems, so I slant out the email message three times. The last time I had to go over and copy the addresses to Photo Club Surface. You know, I noticed something about the link. I noticed the first one that you sent out had it seemed like it had a different uh, Zoom link than the last one. Really? That, I don't know. I just I just looked at the uh, the message you know, on that, and uh, I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Hey, Ron. Good to see hey. you. Hey, how are you? Good. good to see you guys. Your fish are doing well. Of I only okay. get one of the emails you sent out. Oh, well, like I said, I'm having email issues. Your fish have gotten to the point if I walk out and stand there, they come to the surface. <laughs> they eat out of your hand, huh? Prist about. Yeah. That's how I still have them in that. Uh, we were, we've been traveling a bit, so... I didn't stick them out in the pond this year and um, they're getting huge. And uh, it's like you said, the second I go out there, they go crazy waiting for food. The ones I got from you haven't grown a lot, but the little ones I had have grown a tremendous amount. I mm. guess that's normal. Yeah, this year was crazy. I looked, I, I didn't know that there were any, um, decent sized fish left in the pond I couldn't find any and then uh, I don't know a couple few months ago I look in there and there's just hundreds of little teeny baby ones and uh, now they're all maybe they're all about an inch and a half long now I actually thought that uh, maybe they came in um, from the ducks because there were a couple of ducks living out there but um, now I've found some that are maybe three inches long so they're probably oh they're growing good we got a nice babies. pond yeah, it's fun. I like the koi. So how are you guys? Good. Good. Okay, I'm supposed to be in Hawaii, but we had to cancel our trip. So I'm kind of down about that. Oh, no. Yeah, we were going to be there all of September, a couple of days of October. I can. Then when uh, the Hawaii governor said, don't come, and... Um, I'm immune compromised, so I thought, and right now I'm going through something with my RA meds. So like if the hospitals are full, I didn't want to take a chance. Nope. Yeah, right. So we just sure. said, well, just we'll stay home. Yeah, you don't want Probably to risk that. Decision. Wise decision. Well, Ann and Linda and Hagopian have all three said they weren't going to be here tonight and that we needed to record it, which it looks like we are. Yeah, Linda's photographing in uh, New Mexico. She's in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. nice. So Keith should show up. He's uh, sent pictures in. Yeah, I'm hoping he will. And I invited uh, Joseph and uh, Tom. How about Max? Well, he had basketball practice and track practice today, and he tells me he's worn out, but I have his pictures, so I'm going to share okay. those. Max is my 12-year-old uh, grandson, and uh, he went uh, photographing with me on Dream Cruise Day, and I had my little roadster with the top down, and he was sitting in the, in the passenger seat with a 10-year-old camera, you know, mm -hmm. shooting pictures, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll see. Nice. That's awesome. No Keith yet. Nope. Yeah, we're six after he can join in. I'm sure we'll. Uh... Just as a point, uh, I sent a couple people the uh, the link to the uh, uh, art prize in Grand Rapids, which starts, I think, Friday. If 
if you haven't been to our price in Grand Rapids, it certainly is it's it's worth going. It's a big deal. And uh, the city is just taken over by this uh, uh, art demonstration or uh, I don't know, what would you call it, Bob? Uh, it's more than a demonstration because it covers the entire city inside and out. And some of the stuff they do are permanent and some of them are huge. And I think they get like a couple hundred thousand people coming from across the country and the uh, prizes are what about uh, three, four hundred thousand dollars in prizes that are given out. It's big money. Yeah, um, and it's all different kinds of sculpture, paintings, photography, uh, you name it. And it's, and it's there. And if you want to do street photography, there's just people all over the place looking at uh, sculptures and artwork. It's, it's really uh, worth the trip out there. They put stuff out in the river. They put it along the banks. They put it over in the uh, uh, presidential library. Grand Rapids is a great little town. Mm. Yeah, my son just moved there. I guess I'll have to get out there more often. <laughs> Where did he move in Grand Rapids? It, well, it's just north of Myers Garden. Okay. He's not right downtown or anything like that. It's it's uh, right off of the Beltway. Yep, I know where it is. Myers is a great place to uh, go take pictures as well. Speaking of Myers, uh, I heard that Myers is opening on October 6th, a downtown Detroit location. And it's going to have... Um, I think higher end stuff. It's different than the normal Myers. And uh, I think they've had over 50 local vendors they're bringing in. So I don't know if that's permanent shelf products or if it's uh, farmer's market style or what. Well, let's, let's get started. And uh, maybe Keith will show up in time. I'll take over the screen. Is that okay, Bob? You betcha. Wow. Anybody seeing the screen? I saw the splash yeah. screen. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I have Keith's picture, so I'll save those until uh, hopefully he shows up. Uh, who, who are we sending the pictures to these days? I kind of lost it's, out on this historically it's been straight to me but to be honest if you want to send them straight to gary go ahead because i just turn around and forward them yeah the more pictures the better mike you're up first <laughs> pretty flowers Mike, I think you're on mute. Okay, uh, so I bought a new camera. Uh, my first uh, try was a full frame, and uh, I bought an A7 III. Uh, that was what they recommended, and I picked one up used. And I bought a, 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 a 24 to 70 Sigma art lens, and uh, I had a few minutes to try it out, and I took this picture of the B, and uh, there is an uncropped version, and then this one here. And if you go in pretty tight, I was I was pretty uh, happy with how handheld I was able to get the little hairs on the bee. I was pretty happy with that. Did you have to use a, a close-up filter or anything with this? No, that's just straight out of the lens. I mean, I did crop it, um, but if you look at the other picture, it, it is uncropped. There you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mike, if you add extension tubes to that, it'll let you get in even closer. Yeah, it's just I have to do everything E mount. Everything I have is A mount. Ouch. Yeah. Mike, the other thing you can try is um, you have to look at the dimensions on the, the lens. But Raynox, yep. you can you put a uh, Raynox makes a thing. It's called a DCR 250. Yep, have it one. Just clips on to the front of the lens and you'll be able to get a lot closer. Really? Uh, yep. There's a 150 and a 250 that they make. I actually have one right in front of me here. It's essentially this. This is the, um, I don't know which one this one. This one's actually more magnified, but if you just push these things in, 
yeah. and clip, clip it onto the front of the lens. I've never used that as a close-up lens, but I use it in as a lens behind a uh, microscope objective for extreme macro. I think that's what this one actually is. This one's even closer than the, um, the 250. I don't use this one too much. How do you spell that? Rainox? Rainox, R-A-Y-N-O-X. Yeah, they're like 70 or 80 bucks. Yeah, they're they're pretty cheap. And um... Canon used to make some really good ones, but they stopped making them. Okay. So, uh, so that was, you know, <clears throat> I didn't have a whole lot to submit. And that was uh, one of the first pictures I took with the camera. And then I did a, uh, took some shots at a work party. This was one of my favorite ones. It was just kind of a, uh, I guess I could sort of think of it as a street shot. It's kind of anonymous. And uh, I just liked him looking away. And then this one here was taken up in Holland, Michigan. Um, I, uh, as uh, Ron was saying, I liked the leading lines going away from the camera. I, I like that. And I also like the uh, nice uh, saturated blue. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You need to hire somebody to walk down the center of this so you get the, the, the scale. Of course, that's what grandkids are for. You can drag them along. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a small picture of Doug and put it in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was supposed to come, too. I just talked to him. So that's what I got. Good. Um, I, actually, I, I almost called you Gary or Bob um, do you have any recommendations on I, I picked up a polarizing filter I went up to camera exchange and uh, they kind of sort of talked me into a pro master uh, it's the higher end um, uh, polarizer I think it was like 158 dollars or something I wanted to get the Hoya they actually said the pro master was better um, pro master is what a lot of the stores sell that whole line of equipment uh, because they can they can get them and sell them for reasonable prices against some of the bigger names uh, they may well be good I don't I don't know the big thing on filters uh, or of any type in front is you want them with multi-resistant coatings okay. multiple coatings to get rid of reflections and other goofy things Okay. Uh, uh, that's a UV filter. Well, I thought I had it right here, but I don't. But it, it does have the uh, the coating on it. Mike, we just did a um, a trip to Kyrgyzstan that um, it was sponsored by Lee Filters. Yeah. And um, when I, when we were there, I had with me um, some filters that were made by a Tiffin. Yeah. yeah. That were supposed to be, you know, really good ones. And, and I did kind of a side-by-side -side, um, comparison and the Lee filters absolutely blew them away. Like the photos really? were, yeah, they were so much better. They're harder to use, you know, because they, um, you have to put the mount on the front of the camera and then, but you, you can slide like a, uh, like a grad filter in and ND filter in and then right. the polarizer kind of clips onto the front where the Tiffin ones, you just screw them onto the front of the lens. Yeah. So it's a little bit clunkier usage, but the, the quality was fantastic on them. Yeah. I, I think they're pretty expensive, though. Yeah, Lee's like always the, been good. I uh, like the breakthrough filters. Yeah. I, I changed all of my uh, lenses from BMWs to breakthroughs a uh, year or two ago. And I've been very happy, never looked back. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at getting a bunch of different stuff, but honestly, after buying the camera and a few lenses, uh, my breakthrough was running out of money. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, I've got uh, I've got a lot of uh, BMW filters to um, to sell at uh, fire sale prices. <laughs> yeah. So Do you have anything? Let, let me know what sizes you you uh, need, and and I'll let you know if I still got one, and I can I'm sure I can make it well worth your while because they're just sitting in a box. And I'd rather have somebody using them. For, for years, Mike, I've used only B&W and only in the last year or so I started using Polar Pro. 
but B and W is good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it a, my main lens is an eighty-two millimeter. Uh, I don't have an eighty-two. Yeah. Um, I, I I did, but I sold the only eighty-two millimeter front uh, lens that I owned. I sold it to somebody, and I threw in the filter because it was no good to me after that. Okay. Um, I have uh, um, the sixty-seven and seventy-seven um polarizers that i bought from you already oh that's right <laughs> <clears throat> we, we, deja vu we already had this conversation <laughs> yeah historically i've always bought the 82s and then used step up rings to yeah. save having to carry a pile of them yeah that's a good good way to go mm -hmm. oh see bob can sell me some filters <laughs> i got so many filters <laughs> You see, I'll stop over with a pile of cash. All right. Okay, I think this is Ron. Yep. This was at the uh, Battle Creek uh, Balloon Festival uh, about six years ago or so. And uh, they were getting ready to do their, um, um, can't remember what they call it. It's when they have the balloons on the ground and they, they light them up. Um, yeah, there's a name for it. And I'm just doing a blank on it. It's really spectacular. Well, these people were right on the other side of the fence and they were inflating their balloon and they, they, they put that stuffed monkey on top of their truck. I thought that was, to me, it was interesting anyway. Ooh, I like that. This is an old thermometer on the COE house in Grass Lake. It was a house that was built in the 1800s, and it's been re restored as a as a uh, as a historic museum. It's a pretty neat place. And one day I was there; they weren't open, and I was just tromping around and looking for stuff to take pictures of. And I saw this old old thermometer on the side there, and I tried to do something halfway artistic with it, and I had fun anyway. <laughs> nice, Ron. Thanks. I like it. Mm -hmm. And these are the hostas that are right in my backyard. One day the uh, sun was just peeking over the roof and hitting just a, a few of the uh, leaves there. And I, I kind of like the way that looked. I yeah. love hostas and the damn deer eat them all. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's funny. We have, we have tons of deer in our backyard. I mean, they're always there. <laughs> and for some reason, the variety of hostas we have, the deer have not touched. But I have had hostas in the past where the deer would just shore them right off to the just above the ground. Yep. This was uh, this past spring at the uh, Northville Farmers Market. This lady was seemed like every time I, I turned around, she and I happened to be in the same area, and I thought she was kind of interesting. She looked. I think she. I hope she had a a cell phone uh, with her with an earbud or something because. She was talking away to herself and laughing, you know, <laughs> and I, I, that sort of attracted my attention. That and the, uh, you look at that tote bag she's got, instead of man up, it's woman up. <laughs> That's good. This was in London in uh, August of 2019. This is the Lloyds of London building in downtown London. Every side of that building, and it's huge. Every side is different. All very modern architecture. This side uh, I found particularly interest, interesting because all the uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, HVAC ductwork was external to the building. Wow. Very industrial looking. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. And, I, and I was able to catch it with just that little bit of light peeking through between the other buildings. That's nice. Okay, this is, uh, I was at Bob DiTomaso's uh, meetup group about seven years ago in uh, Rochester Municipal Park, and he had a couple of, of uh, senior girls there as models, and we were learning about taking outdoor portraits, and, and this, this young lady I thought was just absolutely gorgeous. Her freckles I thought were great. The title of this should be the same as, a, as the beginning of an old Beatles song. Well, she was just 17, you know what I mean? 
but uh, she was, I told her, I thought she had beautiful eyes and she just lit up. She does. This is the backside of the undergrad library at U of M. I was wandering around there one morning. It was still, uh, the sun hadn't gotten to that area because there's an overhang, but they had the lights on uh, that upper left-hand corner and then all the uh, leaves of the trees framing it uh, caught my eye. And that's the inside of the reading room in the U of M Law Library. Nice picture. Looks like Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice building. Oh, it is. It's a gorgeous building and that inside is uh, I, I went to law school at Wayne State, but I have friends that, uh, that went to Michigan's law school. And uh, one uh, colleague of mine, uh, she said that that reading room, well, right now they've got half of it has those, see those little plaques that are on the table, little, little plexiglass. It says that that half is reserved for law students only. The other half, which is essentially identical, it was behind me, is open. Well, my, my colleague told me, she said, you know, the law students rarely hang out and, and uh, study in there because at night uh, it's full of uh, young ladies that are there trying to meet lawyers, future lawyers. <laughs> that, that's her words, not mine. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's see. Here's Keith. And we've got Carol Geek with us too. Thanks Hi. for coming. Thanks for having it. Oh, good. Okay. Um, let's see. Ann. Yeah, I was. Um, I haven't been doing much since I've not been going anywhere, and uh, so I've this this these uh, pond pictures here from Kensington from this summer. Um, and I was just kind of playing around with some of the uh, presets and uh, filters. And I think one of them I did with the um, invert <laughs> fill layer and combined with a, uh, a neural filter. So just kind of playing around with colors and tones um, with, these, with these photographs. So Anne, I've had a sneak peek at the first two or three of these and I am just, in love with these pictures. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, this is like uh, Monet, and I, I'm just—you got to tell us what's going through your mind when. I mean, how did how did you do this? I mean, what's inspiring you to do this? And uh, um, just uh, I I follow um, a photographer. I follow several photographers. They seem to all be in the UK, um, and his name is Mark Littlejohn, and he does a lot of. Um, photography in woodlands and you know the Scotland landscape but just recently he he did reeds now I I had these reed pictures and he has some uh, several reed pictures that he just posted on his Facebook and I think he used um almost like infrared on some because the the lily pads are white, you know, and the reeds might be a different color. I don't know how he did it, but it inspired me to go back to my pictures I took this summer at Kensington and see what I could do with some of the color toning. Yeah, and the color toning is great. It's, uh, you know, you don't have to go real intense with the colors. I mean, the, the, the subtlety of the colors matches the subtlety and the approach of the, of, of the images. And it's just a great combination. I, I keep, I'm panning back and forth between these first three <laughs> Thank Just you. I can't pick a winner here. I think they're, <laughs> they're all amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and that's actually great, all the same picture cropped differently. Is so it really? First, yes. Wow. Those first three are all the same picture, just cropped differently. Nice. Nicely yeah. done. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the next one is uh, different. If, if it's another one. No. Okay. That'll yeah. be at the end. So you're, you're, the, the coloration here, the tone, mm -hmm. you switched the tones around a little bit on all three of these. Yes, I did, yeah. You give it a different look, but uh, wow. Just great. Thank you. 
And then these, because I was in Hawaii, I went back to some of my old Hawaii pictures where I, <laughs> I've, I've been doing waves. You know, I did the black and white waves. And so I went in and pulled out some of the ones that I did where I used uh, one eighth of a second and then moved the camera to get the blur of the waves. So these next four are all, you know, just wave pictures blurred for like a abstract kind of look. Okay, I'll keep uh, going through these four, and you can talk talk to us more about how you how you did it because uh, I think it's worth looking at these. Wow, how much were you moving? Were you, I mean, you had a te these were telephoto. Right? Yeah, telephoto. I used my one hundred to four hundred at one eighth of a second, and I just panned my. I stood in place, you know, just panned my camera real quick in the one eighth second that the shutter was open. You nailed them. I like that one. Oh, thanks. Nailed that one. Yeah. And there's so many different kinds of waves. You just keep taking them and hope that, you know, when I take wave pictures, whether it's this kind or, you know, fast shutter or whatever, I'm taking, I, I probably take 2,000 in a day. Okay. The hard part is going through them later and seeing what, you know, which ones you captured <laughs> that are good. Yeah. So the coloration <laughs> here, you're going from purple to aquamarine to, uh, you know, a combination of pale yellow and uh, a little orange. And was this created later or was this in the original image? No, the original. Um, those are all in front of, uh, these are all in front of the condo that we have a timeshare and uh, that are right in front of the condo. So it's really easy. I just go down to the shoreline and I start taking pictures. And because the water is really deep up sh shortly after you, you know, we don't swim there or anything. And then depending on the time of day, you get all kinds of colors on, on, the, on the water. Is it because the light's coming through the waves? Yes. Yeah, the waves are amazing. I mean, they are, you wouldn't think with the deep water, but when the waves come up, they are beautifully turquoise, just gorgeous. Mm. Wow. Oh, and that's where, you know, the wind would have been wisping the, the crest of the waves. Nice. So it's exaggerated by my movement with the camera. Did you move sideways or up and down? Or how, what direction? Uh, usually I go from like left to right. This one I might have gone up a little. All right. But it's really short and quick and... This happens, you know, so it's kind of a luck of the draw. I mean, I don't have any kind of calculating thing that I'm doing when I actually take the picture. I just keep trying and some of them work. Most of them actually work because um, it's pretty simple. Just one eighth of a second and move your camera. And then this was the final. This is, a you know, obviously different. And I have a couple other versions of this one. Um, well, I put you nailed the colors. Oh, thanks. Because it was fall. So when I took this, this is from last year in fall. And so I kind of kept it in those tones. The real one has a lot more oranges in it. And then I have done did another one that's very, very subtle, real, real light greens. So there's a couple other versions I have of that one. But my husband liked this one the best. So that's why I put it up here. Too. And, and my wife just walked in the room and she's mesmerized and she can't leave because she's looking at, at your photos. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, they're all great. I mean, just. Yeah. Thank oh. you. If I could just get back out there now and do some more photography. I, I am scheduled to go to New Mexico end of November into December. So I'm hoping that works out because I'm going to Bosque. And um, then I have a photographer that's going to take me to White Sands. And then I'm going to go to Santa Fe and Taos for a couple of days. What I'm hoping, I'm trying to get a hold of this photographer in Santa Fe because I don't do portraits, but I want to learn how to do some. And they do a cowboy Indian portraiture and mm -hmm. they look fabulous, but uh, he hasn't gotten back with me. So I don't know if maybe they're not doing it right now, but it's, I'm, I'm dying to do his workshop. So these were at Kensington? Yes. Okay. Yeah, th this one is from, if you walk um, 
around, you know where the boardwalk is over the, over the pond? Yes. It's on the other side, opposite of the boardwalk, on the okay. back. I, yeah, I've been there, yes. <laughs> the, the light wasn't like this when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> that that are, whole set of pictures should be in a gallery. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. Seriously, wow. you, ought to, you ought to contact the DIA. Really? This wow. is better. This is better than a lot of stuff I see them have on display. Oh my God. Well, thank you. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> oh, you, you have to donate the picture and die and then donate the picture. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die yet. I got too much to do. <laughs> I like that uh, second one the best. Oh, he's the one Thanks. Which one here? This yeah. Picture. Yeah, yeah, that's I what do, I do. I, yeah, it's hard to choose. They're all very good. I, but this, this is really special, the yeah. detail down here and the colors. And, uh, and what I did, I did the, uh, the inversion layer on that and then um, did some colorization. I don't remember quite the different steps I used, but I started with the, oh. an inversion layer. On the opposite side of the pond. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. These first three are all the same image, but just mm. processed differently. It's very interesting. Of course, I love the waves. Yeah. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Bob and I made a trip. <laughs> Tell them about it, Bob. Uh, this was down at uh, the old car festival at Greenfield Village. The old gent here in this car is Gary's neighbor, and he's the uh, head of the Paquette uh, Museum, Ford Museum, and also, I think, the United States uh, Model T Club. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> cool guy. I always like to see him out. This is his father's old pickup. Wow. His grandfather originally bought this uh, almost 100 years ago. That's his wife, Jan, next to him. That's pretty cool. Wonderful, wonderful people. Just a grab shot, one of the few I did in regular photography. It, what it doesn't show is, is how dark it really was there at that time. I mean, the, the light was almost gone, and uh, Bob did a great job uh, you know, getting the, the exposure nailed on this. This uh, I did a, most of the shots you're going to see here are done in infrared with a converted uh, uh, A7R. Um, camera, Sony camera, and uh, they are all done at uh, 590 nanometers, and then I process them at, at uh, 815, so it kind of gives it the look. You'll notice that the skin tones are particularly creamy. Uh, that's one of the characteristics of infrared, but I hadn't used the camera in a while, and I thought I'd get out and just shoot some of the, uh, the people at, at uh, Greenfield Village. Uh, here's again the ladies sitting around. These are, of course, part of Greenfield's paid actor group, but um, you'll see them in some other pictures. This guy was interesting. Uh, the match had just gone inside, but he's lighting the fire in the Stanley steamer boiler. Is that the photography studio building? Right yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, just to the right. This is the way the Edison Menlo Park Lab looked on Saturday. And there was a guy playing the organ for a couple hours. And I thought that was uh, particularly well done. I did notice the floor being in way too good a shape for the lab. And uh, again, all of these are in infrared, but uh, I think one of the next shots is um, a photograph that one of the curators there had. And it was probably, uh, oh, probably um, 11 by 14 or something. So I took a picture of that. And uh, that's Thomas Edison in the center. And you can see what the lab really looked like. Wow, that's cool. Cool, that's cool. It's got the same organ or whatever there in the back. Every, yeah, everything in there is the same. Henry was meticulous in recreating. That's awesome. Is it possible that's Nikola Tesla to the right of him? Mm, I don't think so, but you never know. Maybe there's a special occasion. Those two weren't exactly close friends. 
They did work together though for a little bit, didn't they? Yeah, it could have. That's my understanding that they, that they did that and then they had a falling out. Differences in math. Here's just some more shots of people uh, running around Greenfield Village. Again, you notice the infrared, the tree leaves are white. I really like what uh, the infrared does to these pictures. Yeah, I do too. Well, it really softens up the skins and things. Because yeah. it actually looks through your skin. This is a group of World War I soldiers going through the drills of rapid fire on a, a cannon. It's a French cannon from World War uh, II. It's a, oh, let me think here. 65 or 85 millimeter. I think it's 65 millimeter. Uh, I know the U.S. Uh, later used to use uh, 105s. And this is the other side of that battery. And there's one guy who decided he's taking a nap. Now, do highlights get more ex or overexposed easier uh, with... It's easy, it's easy to make them look overexposed, and I probably should have uh, dropped these. I did a pretty, pretty hurried uh, edit on these early this morning. But that's a characteristic of the process, the infrared? Yeah, process. it can be. Uh, there's a lot of complex things you can do to infrared. Um, my camera is set for 590 nanometers, which means a portion of the colored light still comes through. And if I wanted, I could have made false colors in these pictures, but I tried to keep it a little more uh, neutral. So I processed it at, uh, at the higher 115. 115 is about where Hagopian is uh, doing his stuff. This is over by the windmill in the gardens there. This guy is a World War I mess hall cook, and he's uh, having corned beef hash uh, pulled out of those big tins. And he's cooking it up. Where Not was this from? I don't remember that. That's that uh, Cotswold. Okay. And here's some nurses at Cotswold. They were making up bandages. I don't think we went that far back, did we, Doug? Oh. Nope. Yeah. Should have. And riding the train around, I just snapped off a few. Um, again, I probably should do a little more editing on these, but. Need more contrast. We're pulling into the station. Obviously, the corn is uh, all green, so it turns kind of white. I like great. that effect. Yeah. And again, on the train, looking at all the people uh, staring at the vehicles. That's the pond out back where they used to have the boat before you get into uh, uh, that uh, train station, Miller's train station. I didn't know they were using canoes back there. I don't know. If, uh, that might be for the school. There we are, back to the start. Thanks. What a great place for doing street photography, though. I mean, I took that approach, you know, that just go there to shoot people. And uh, I, that's that's the best it's ever been. <laughs> this is the first time I've been to this uh, at night. And and I was telling Gary earlier that uh, he and Doug left before the thing got good. <laughs> um, of all of the events Greenfield Village has, the September old car show is the best. And it was particularly entertaining uh, about a quarter to nine, uh, the band, which was an incredibly good band, uh, came down from their bandstand and uh, began playing uh, New Orleans style music and then marched the entire crowd over to the church. 
and then back around to the uh, the front entrance of the place, stopping periodically to do a bunch of solos. And uh, they were really good. It was, the crowd was just swinging. They're just photographing the people in the cars and watch, or photographing the people that are watching the people in the cars. <laughs> All of it was, uh, I've got a few pictures I didn't share, but uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Yep, it was a good event. Uh, let's see. Could I ask a quick question about sure. the infrared? Um, yeah. So breakthrough photography makes a an X2 IR filter that'll screw onto the front of a lens. Will that get you an infrared look? Um, I wouldn't bother. Uh, the only reason is is that the uh, when you take your lens off your camera, what you're seeing is not the sensor. What you're seeing is an IR uh, filter. And its intent is to reduce the ability for IR to get in the sensor. And then if you screw on an IR uh, filter on the front, what it's really doing is uh, trying to uh, narrow down and cut out the visible light. And it leaves you with damn little light hitting the sensor. So you end up with very long exposure times. If you have a converted camera or you borrow one, um, they operate at normal conversion times. There are some funny things about infrared though. For example, if you're using a camera that's uh, got the uh, mirrors, um, the mirrors uh, are problematic because of the way they handle the light. Infrared light doesn't focus the same as regular visible light. And so one of the things I had trouble with on a, on a mirrored camera I converted was that um, all of the, uh, the lenses needed to be focused for uh, the infrared. And since they didn't focus the same, some lenses would not work because they were out of the focal distance. When you send it into a conversion place, they take the cheap $100, 50 millimeter lens for that brand and they focus it for that. But let's say you're running at 24 to 140, um, it's going to maybe not work at one end or the other of that spectrum. So that became uh, quite an issue. Now, if you convert a mirrorless camera, that problem goes away because it's, it's going right off the sensor. I think if you use live view on your camera, it, that also works good. Yeah, yeah. it's just that you've, uh, you've got a, a, a slow shutter or a long shutter speed if you're, if you're not using a converted camera. Okay. Hey, Bob, I've been looking at these uh, conversions. There's about three or four different uh, levels of conversions for these IR type uh, yep. cameras. Which, which is the, I don't know which one to go for. I, I, the one that does black and white, some of them have partial color in them. <laughs> That's a difficult choice, no matter how you go. It's, uh, if you do what I did on the last camera, I had it set at uh, 590 uh, nanometers, which means it's letting in a, a bunch of color, but not all. And then I have the ability to process that and make, uh, I'll say, false colors um, and different colors than you might normally see. And by changing the uh, white balance uh, or the, uh, uh, the way that you uh, uh, calibrate your camera. But you can also, since I'm letting in some visible light, you can put on filters that further restrict it. And so you can get it down to uh, whatever nanometer you want. That filter was on the camera you sold, Bob Hagopian. Uh, the one he's got is about a, uh, it's about a 750 or 715. It's in that range. It does a good job. And that's probably the most popular. Um, the, if the higher the nanometer, the more light is, vis or colored light is uh, excluded. Once you get up above uh, 800 and, or so, uh, then it starts to turn completely black and white. Um, and then there's some other funny filters. Um, I, I can give you some recommendations. I've used two different companies. I, there's at least three or four, and my understanding is they're all good. Okay. 
Okay, good stuff. Keith, I thought we were going to see Alaska pictures. He's saving those for the competitions. <laughs> Actually, these, these are Alaska pictures. Okay, they are. Oh, okay. This is the uh, Alaska Art Museum in uh, Fairbanks. Uh, a stairwell inside the museum. I like the shadows you, you've captured there too. Thank you. Do you know who the architect is? Uh, I do not. Uh, is, is Doug still here? He, maybe he knows. He was there with me. It's secret. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Doug, can you Google it uh, while you're sitting there? That would, I'm, I'm interested as to uh, if it's one of the big guys. I don't think it is, but I'll look. Well, the color on that's really great. Yeah, this was um, right some of the last light of the day, and it was real clear. So it, it, that's some nice uh, colors on the on the building there. Yeah, I like that. Interesting processing that, but that look, really looks good. How did you get the sky so black? Well, it was real blue. So um, uh, on the conversion thing uh, with a red filter, it turns it black. There you go. Okay. So they, yeah, I was trying to get the real um, solid colors uh, through the thing. How do you spell architect, Gary? <laughs> A R C H I T E C T. Good. This was uh, up at the China Hot Springs. Um, and there was, uh, they had uh, Joan three... Serrano. Who is it? Joan, J O A N Serrano, S O R A N N O, nationally recognized architect. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of her. And the GDM HGA architectural team designed the building to convey a sense of Alaska with innovative lines and spaces evoking images of alpine ridges, glaciers, breakup of the Yukon River and the Aurora. Yeah, I'd like to see more work of hers. That, that looks pretty good. Keith did a pretty good job of capturing the, uh, the character no, I can't enter these in club. <laughs> Why not? Huh? Just let me know what night you enter, and I'll enter mine. <laughs> I really like that Ford picture that you just had up. That's really nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I used the, the perfect uh, light. <laughs> yeah. And the detail extractor and in, uh, in Nick, and you can re really bring out the texture and the uh, uh, colors. Yeah, that's very nice. Do you happen to know of any uh, like salvage yards around here that are antique car salvage yards? No? Okay. No. No. Old I know of a salvage yard. Old, yards, old but Car City down in Georgia. That. Yeah. That's, there's that's that the place down by Dundee. Yeah. What, is it? what is it again? There's a place by Dundee, Michigan, you know where Cabela's is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right along the freeway. I, I, I've passed it. I see a lot of old cars in the woods there, but I've never stopped. All right. It's huge. It's crazy in there. It's not as big as the one in Georgia, but it's still pretty damn big. So the, this was a kind of an interesting mural um, in uh, Fairbanks. So. You don't have the sower. Oh, I think I do on another one, okay. another picture. Yeah, I was on the side of a sewing shop. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the next one. Uh, no, this is uh, 
I think that there's another one that says a straight shot of this mural. Um, is it the next one? Yeah. And then, then I, I tried that uh, motion blur uh, uh, darken method on it. So, so this is not the, the original colors. You, this is the original color. This is the original here, yeah. Oh, this is the, okay, combination with the blur and... Yeah, and blur and the difference, so. That's cool. I'm, I'm gonna, Keith, I'm gonna show you at the end a, a technique that I'm working with Hi. for double exposures with this technique. And I think you're, you're gonna like it. I, at least I hope you will. Okay. Sounds uh, good. Dude, this was this was drawn meant to be like the ravens were sitting on pole on posts and poles and whatever. Yeah. That, that last one. So yeah, th this is the other half of that on mural there on the sewing shop. Okay. Good. When do we get to see the polar bears and they're not the polar bears, but the uh, grizzly really? bears and uh, no. Mm -hmm. I and I have so I have some on my thing, but they're not you know form to look at like that. So okay, they're JPEGs. I can pull them up, and you can look at a couple. I just sent them to you, Gary. You could pull them up and show them. I don't have them readily available somewhere else. I okay. do it. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're not set in the format to show. So not on here. I don't know how to do that. Okay, I think we hit, did. We get everybody. Okay, I, I'm, I brought these in. These are my grandsons. He's 12 years old. And there's a reason I'm showing these. I, I think of all the genres of photography, street photography probably relies more on luck than anything else. And as we're driving around, I'm encouraging Max to look around and just if he sees, sees a car he likes, uh, a group of people, colors, anything, just take the picture. Because part of the discovery process that you go through later is finding out what's going on in these pictures. No matter how good you are, you're not fast enough to catch these decisive moments like uh, Henry Car Cartier-Bresson did. You know, he it's being discovered now that he really set the, a lot of these pictures up that he did. And uh, I mean, street photography is half luck. And I'm gonna demonstrate it by showing these pictures, so. Um, Wow, nicely done. I like the little guy. And when I say luck is that you're gonna discover as you take these pictures, you're not gonna have time to look at the, the, the face and, and the uh, emotions and the thing of all these people in the, in the split second that you have to take these pictures. And it's really not until you get back home and you start looking and you find out the expressions on people are really surprising and interesting. And, and so you just, have to keep shooting and you have to keep trying because uh, by, by no means my, is my grandson a, a, a photographic prodigy, you know, but he, he understands some of the, the basics of photography. And I think he's starting to learn that, you know, you just take the picture. And so when we got these done, he probably took about 150 pictures that day. We, we sat down together and decided which of those we wanted to uh, process uh, whether they should be color or black and white and how to crop them. And he played a, a, a large role in that decision-making process. But uh, the, the curious part is some of these pictures are actually really good. And, uh, and I think it's a result of just, you know, the, the, uh, the luck of being there at the right time and just shooting the, the picture. I think we're probably guilty of overthinking stuff too, you know? Yeah, you're, you're yeah. absolutely right. I was, I was talking about that. You know, <laughs> may, maybe street photography isn't as difficult as we're making it. But feel free to comment on any of these that you like. That is that, oh, I thought that was, is that Woodward camera, that last one? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's in the background. So, I mean, things just show up. Sometimes you'll see somebody in the background. Uh... So what's interesting in this is he's, we're passing this uh, crazy looking vehicle and you notice in the foreground, there's a blurred out purple car. 
And he was fast enough where he took this picture and then looked back as we're driving by and then took this picture. Oh, wow. good for him. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was, that's, that's doing pretty good. It is. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes people are uh, like staring at you and you don't know it until uh, until later. Other people are looking off and there's some things going on in the background, so. <laughs> this I thought was pretty interesting. Here's the guy, I mean, he cut his feet off, but that's okay. There's a guy in the background who's kind of like, you know, walking with his wife in the, in the, in the buggy and he's looking back either at this guy or at us taking the picture. And then the indoor shooting ranges in the gun shop. A good, that one's a good one. And this one I thought was pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. He told me he liked this because of the colors. Yeah, they are nice. Yeah. Blues and silvers. <clears throat> There's a lot going on in this picture. I mean, the guy's got the uh, the thing for his uh, old pro or something. Yeah, he's doing the selfies, and there's people sitting behind the motorcycles, and guys in the background here. So he's just firing these off. But these last two, I thought, were really good i'd be proud to have either one of these yeah, yeah that's a good one and the colors worked out real well and the characters compositions good Com composition nice, nice good. gestures yeah yeah <laughs> they both have the same kind of gesture there the yeah. guy the one guy in the truck and the other one kind of a norman rockwell kind of a, a look into the into the picture yeah and then this one i thought was pretty good too oh that's nice yeah yellow shirts and yellow car and just the way the car is kind of concentrated in the picture there. That's nice. Yeah. So I, I did pretty good, but I, yeah. again, I, you know, how much of this is luck, you know, and I, I'm, I'm sitting next to him and he's not taking pictures and I'm yelling, Max, take pictures. And he's, I am grandpa. I am. I said, you know, <laughs> don't hesitate, just take the pictures. And so we were arguing back and forth and he's firing off pictures. And I kept saying over there, over there, over, you know, and so we had fun. And I think when he got back and he saw all his pictures, he started to realize, you know, that, uh, you know, street photography had just go out and, and start firing away. And uh, so he had fun. Nice, nice. Very yeah, that's nice. cool. Yeah. Um, so I, here's some stuff I've been experimenting with. And um, I'll show you the... Uh, Copy that. Yeah, we're... This is a result of, of two different photographs. Uh, you could call it a double exposure, but it's two different photographs selected because of the colors that they contain and then layering them on top of each other. And it's a different process than we use with the buildings with the blur. Instead of blurring the same picture and using it again, we're taking two photographs. And if you're going to do this, look for pictures with real strong colors in them because they start working with each other and give you some remarkable uh, colors in here, especially if there's graphics like the, the signs for Viviano's and the home bakery and, and uh, the shadows and the windows. It, it uh, you know, it just. They're really cool. Now, do, are there a lot of layers in these then? Okay. Is, this is only two photographs, and it's okay, remarkable so just, what happens when you pick the right colors. And you know, like this, is, one of them is the uh, a store called the Urban Merchant, and then there's the uh, Rochester Chop House with with uh, Red's. Uh, uh, what's the name of that, Doug? Red Naps. Red Nap Diner. Inside. and just the combination of the two. You know, I've tried hundreds of these combinations. A lot of them don't work out. If the colors aren't intense enough, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. But when you get them and you click that uh, uh, that button uh, for difference, is, is, and that's the one that works the most, and all of a sudden it pops and you just see it and you know that there's something there. 
So the, through the blending motion is how you're getting both pictures to- Right, I'll, I'll demonstrate how. How, how to do that. Okay, good. Uh, but okay. these are really fun because of the graphics and, and the geometry that you get from this. They're nice. They're really yeah, nice. I like these. Now this one is the top of a Corvette, the hood of a Corvette wow. superimposed on the uh, Oakland County uh, building downtown Detroit. So you can try all kinds of different combinations. Comerica Park with uh, the Gem Theater. That's really well done. Yeah, that is cool. And they almost come off like a comic book kind of an illustration when you get these intense colors. It's not like they're oversaturated, they're just intense. Mm -hmm. This is the That's front really and back cool. of a car that I, I tried. And again, these are just, I'm just trying things to see how they're gonna work. That's cool too. Start I like that. Down. I like, I like that. that. That's really nice. This is one of the ladies at the uh, old car festival that uh, was posing and uh, they, they walk around and uh, I, I just ask, you know, may I take your, your portrait and I see how nice their hats look and the dress, ask them if they make the dress and they're, and uh, the, the, I think they're, they're looking for compliments, uh, which they should because they look so nice and they spend so much time on their, their costumes. And the trick is just to get in the right position with the right, you know, facing the, the light correctly in the shadows so that you don't get the harsh shadows on the face, getting a dark background. Uh, I, I did darken some of the background, but I didn't have to do a lot. She was right in uh, in line with a, a dark area in the, behind us, but uh, she turned out real nice. And this, I, I, this was taken. Uh, this, these how how the people are just lined up along the curb, watching the cars go by, and it's not much different than the uh, Dream Cruise. Uh, it's the same setup. People are sitting there watching watching cars go by and it, it's fun to take the photographs and just look at the expressions on their faces. So the Oh, that's good. Yeah. I mean, technically this is a horrible shot. I mean, it's, it's late at night. Uh, I, I didn't have enough ISO to, to, uh, uh, it was probably just plain dark. And, uh, but the, you know, the looks on the people's faces, it's a lot of fun. This was a panel. I took two shots of the uh, bleachers that they had set up there. And uh, you can go through here and look at each one of these individuals. I think I counted as close to 120 people or something sitting there. And, uh, you know, all of these, each one of these people are kind of special in their own way. Not a lot of masks in there, huh? Right. That's what I was just thinking. All I could think of is COVID, COVID. COVID. I didn't even think of it until I saw the one lady with it on there. And then groups of people, a lady by herself, and then three people on the other bench. The cars with people. Looks like a happy family. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you, you wonder why didn't I crop out the, the little buggy going by, but this guy's actually looking at the buggy, so. Yeah. This is by Doug's favorite spot in the entire park. Ice it's cream next store? To, I was going to say, it's a really good ice cream. <laughs> Not oh, yeah. that day. So I got 25, 30 good uh, people shots there. I thought it was great. I, I just... Uh, Loved it. And then uh, the, uh, unfortunately, they were putting the trains away. What was it about six o'clock, Bob? You called it? Yeah, they night. put away the Torch Lake around uh, six o'clock. And then the only one that was left running was that uh, Carolina uh, diesel, the gray one. It's kind of ugly. And they were going to put it away at 830. Yeah, this would have been a lot nicer if the, if the workers had been in there, you know, just walking around. Uh, so all I was able to get is just a shot with the doors open. I still like it with the three doors. 
Yeah, this one I took, and I'm just wondering what I'm going to do with this. Uh, I'm thinking about putting it, putting in a special sky or something, but uh, it's it's a work in progress. That's what I was going to take. I was talking to you about that one. I never did get back to do it. It was a beautiful car. Here's here's one idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there, just, just playing around. Maybe use one of those effects to light the lights or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah light, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, I can light them. Okay, so here are two images. And this is the combined image. But I'm gonna go into Photoshop and show you how this works. Okay, so I've layered these in Photoshop. You can do this just by uh, uh, taking both, uh, clicking on both of the images and going into, let's see, tools, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. That makes it pretty easy just to get in. If, there's, if you're gonna do any processing, processing, do it before you, you do this, but you don't want to wait and, and do it uh, later. Um, so let me, okay. So we have this on top, this on the bottom, okay. And it doesn't matter how you layer them. What happens is that when you pick the blending mode, you can you can start going down these, these uh, different blending modes and seeing, uh, let me see. I was hoping that these would just change. They, they, okay, here we go. You can see lighter, darker, and you get different effects as you're going through the different blending modes. And it doesn't always work that difference is the best, but in, in, in the cases that I've done so far, this is, this is where, this is difference. And you can see right away that the intensity of the colors, the matching, the graphics all seems to, to work pretty well. And, and the way to adjust, rather than just uh, flatten this right now and take it in and start playing with it, what you can do is go into image adjustments layer or levels and start adjusting the top layer and seeing what happens to the colors. Mm. All kinds of changes start happening as you're just changing. This is the uh, the mid-tone, the darks. And you don't need to change much to get this to start changing the colors. There's all kinds of, you know, hundreds of different variations that you can do. And if you find just the one you want, you say, okay, flatten the image. And, and at that point, then you can take it back into camera raw and start playing around with exposure, clarity, dehaze. And for some reason, it doesn't seem like you can overdo this. I mean, the, the colors are so saturated. And I don't know what happens during the process to make this happen, but it becomes almost a graphic. And even if you turn up the texture or turn down the texture, When you turn down the texture, it, comes, it becomes almost like a, a, a painting type graphic. And if you bring it up higher, you get more of the details and the textures. So it's something that you can play around with. But the, um, so you, you really have to go looking through pictures. You don't have to take two that you took on the same day. It's just a combination of uh, two different pictures that you think are gonna work. I don't think it works well on landscape, but I haven't tried it. I would just think with the leaves and, and the foliage and things like that, that this is probably not a, a great uh, combination to try. You can try it though. Um, but certainly storefronts and things like that are Fall taking color care. might. What would you say, Bob? Fall color might be fall nice. Co yeah, fall color could work if you have really intense colors. Uh, that would work good, but you know, combining this, uh, you know, with the front of a car, a, a storefront, uh, all, all the different combinations. As long as you have the, the the strong colors in there, I think there's an opportunity to really 
create something really graphic like this. Yeah, this looks like fun. Now you got me thinking of which ones I'm going to pull out from my archives. Yeah, right. Gary, did you take these two photos to do this or did you just later? Yeah, these are downtown Rochester. I've had these, uh, you know, I've got hundreds and hundreds of pictures of uh, downtown Rochester, downtown Birmingham, Detroit. And so you just start going through and they don't really have to be in the same scale either. I mean, you could have a, a, a shot done with a, a longer telephoto that's just a detail of a sign and then superimpose it on, a, on an entire storefront or you know, just make different combinations, just try them. It's a very simple process, but the results are pretty amazing. So Keith, does this give you any ideas? Oh yeah, I'm um, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to try a few things. Yeah, yeah. Gave, so I have a lot, a lot of ideas to uh, things to start with. Okay. The one that you did, where the um, the woman was like in the the grill of the car, did you mask? that in and then do different yeah let me go back to to that um that was really nice it's a combination of uh the blending mode and uh, when i did it you, you had more of the storefront on the rest of the car but i decided to take another copy of the red car and put it over the top the, the top of the combined to and then mask out uh, so that it was just in the grill. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a result of just looking at it. It, uh, it, it looked better than having the storefront kind of extend out into the, into the car. This way it looks like yeah. you're looking through the grill of the car and at the storefront. And these, these lines that you see here are actually the grill of the car, not on the storefront. The, these lines are the, uh, the storefront lines but this line here is the bar coming across the front of the, the screen. So it, it's the, the trick is getting the right combination of, of two pictures that work. Right. Yeah, it's really cool. Where, where's the uh, some of the others again? Just uh, Jump Theater and Comerica Park. These two. Black and white works, but it just uh, when you compare the black and white to the colors, the colors just seem just so more, much more graphic. Yeah, I mean, with the color, it's it's crazy. It's like an optical illusion. Your eyes don't even know where to go. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it makes it very interesting. You just kind of want to yeah. keep looking at different yeah, spots. Exactly. You know? There's so many shades. Well, you know, with a normal double exposure, a lot of stuff just gets lost. There's nothing lost in these. They, all, they both come through and you see the intensity of both pictures. It's just that you really have to stare at it to find mm -hmm. out you know, what matches up with Viviano's, what matches up with the home bakery and uh, everything's there. So it's, I, I think it's a giant step forward from just traditional double exposures. Yeah, I really like that. Thanks for sharing that. It's gonna be something uh, fun to do now. <laughs> Thanks Gary. Now okay. I'm going to not get any sleep tonight. I'll be doing that all night. <laughs> okay, let me uh, go back to this. And uh, I am going to turn this back to you, Bob. Do you want to see some Alaska pictures? You sure. Sure, go for it. What do I do, a share screen? Yeah. Yeah. How long were you there, Doug? Two weeks. Nice. Right Near there. Anchorage, or where were you? Uh, Seward to uh, Fairbanks. Okay. Now, these are just low-res JPEGs that I got on here. I'm going to show you like that. That was our first day there. Wow. A bunch snow of snow. Yeah, nice. Wow. Doug, when was this? A couple. We just got back Friday. That rack on that moose. Yeah, these are just. And do, do they lose the rack? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Because when I saw a moose in uh, Yellowstone, it didn't have a rack. It might have been a cow. Been uh, a cow. Yeah, that's true. It did have so a baby. Those are antlers as opposed to horns. Horns are yeah, permanent. These are antlers. Antlers yeah. are okay. shed every year. They're all antlers. Like, yeah. Just like deer, regular. Okay. 
Okay, here's uh, <clears throat> Denali one day. Wow, that's pretty. I like the clouds over the over the mountain there. Another moose, just a cow. Mama moose. It was raining that day too. You can kind of tell because the the color on the foliage is is uh, vibrant. Yeah. Well, that was like the peak of the color too near the end of the okay. trip. So. So Doug, when these horns fall off, do they disintegrate over the uh, winter, or do you, can you find? Oh, them I think they around? stay there. People find them. Yeah, they, they find small them. All animals eat on them and stuff like that. So. Okay, and here's a. Aurora, nice. Yeah. This was the first night we shot it. Well, first good night. Beautiful. With the, yeah, with the purple. I love when they get more of the color in there. Yeah, and this was uh, some big event. So when you're standing there and you're watching it, do you see the colors? You see these. We saw these. I was shooting. I shot some of the stuff with my cell phone, but not these. These are with the big boy camera. So. And, and if you haven't seen them before, I've only saw them the one time in Iceland, um, but it, they're just mesmerizing because they're always moving. It's just yeah. Keith can, tell, Keith can tell you about this night, so. Um, yeah, this one here is. Wow, moving a lot of it. Yeah. yeah, this was the wow. one that was really moving. It was spinning around over our head, all different colors and everything, oh, like an explosion gorgeous. and stuff. It got really bright here, yeah. Couldn't what time in the morning was this? This was this here was shot about one second exposure. At what time in the morning? Uh, I don't know. It was before one. Between twelve and one, yeah. Okay. Between twelve and one, we shot. Yeah. yeah. So if you did a video of this, would it look the same way, or would it? Oh, uh, I think if you get enough light in, you could probably see a lot of the movement stuff then yeah. too. But you know, yeah. we didn't do it. And then here's a. What are these, Keith? <laughs> the doll sheep, yeah. They were pointing them out, and I just couldn't see them. We were he could the not problem. see. He could not. They were way up there, you know. But he couldn't see them, and I, I could see why he couldn't see them. I always had trouble, but then you know, they were just white. They were on this stuff when we first saw them, and then they moved around. They started walking up the ridge here. What lens do you have? Six hundred or five hundred? Um. Yeah. Oh. And then this was our best experience. The last day we were in. Oh wow. Wow. How, how close were you to the bear? Closer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Were you, did you, you ever he feel was, in he danger? Was a, he was, no, he, we were on a bus. You're on a oh, bus. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can't get out when there's a bear. And, okay. and it was like, you know, way up the hill on our left. And we just watched him walk right down to the bus. Then he walked across the, across the road and there was a sign there and he decided to scratch an itch here. Oh, how cool. <laughs> That's awesome picture. Oh. Uh, that's great. So do they put the nails in that in the sign just for the, the bears? Well, I think yeah, they put I think they put them there so they don't because you can see how they tear them up. He yeah. was chewing on the post there. Yeah. Yeah. Later so, on he was chewing on the post. I got a picture of it. So but you know, they they just, you know, they'll they probably have to replace this post several times a year, you know. Yeah. And they put the nails there to try to keep them off of it. But he, <laughs> they just scratch they on it. scratching posts. He likes yeah. it more. Did you go buy me some insure? What? Where did you find it? What? I, th I think he's talking to somebody else. <laughs> some of buying insure. I don't know. The bears don't need that. <laughs> Look at this. So this this bear, this bear went and lay down and rolled around in these willows and stuff. Just rolled all around and everything. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. All. So then he went. Then he went back to the post. Oh, you see how they just so tear it up. Cute. Hmm? He's cute. And then he walked away. And that's it. How so nice to see you. The end. Maya and I just got back from a trip um, up in the Arctic watershed. And uh, on the way up, I don't know if you guys know where Wawa is. Yep, I uh, know. It's like on the. Um, the north ridge of uh, Lake Superior, oh. and uh, we we found this blueberry patch that had to be about twenty acres. And I said, "Okay, this is the this is the spot to go find bears." And couldn't have been two minutes after I said it, this black bear crossed the street right in front of us. So 
we watched them for a little bit and he didn't care too much about us. So we actually got out and we were walking around the, uh, the blueberries with them, photographing them for two days. He was there the next day too. It was really cool. I know one time I was here in Denali and, and went, stayed way in the park and then they'd come back out in the vehicle, you know, and there was a, a real blonde, uh, grizzly sitting in the blueberry eating the blueberries and when i got up to walk away its whole rear end was just bright blue blue yeah that's cool. <laughs> From From blueberries. I, I, I mean i've got a picture of that that's that's an awesome photo yeah, yeah. That's great yeah <laughs> we had one little cub walking down the street just looked like a puppy it was the cutest thing you ever seen there, yeah and uh we're watching it and we're sitting in the jeep at that point you know we we're in the car and uh it kind of ducked into the um, the bushes and we said, okay, you know, that one's so little, mama's got to be around here. And 10 seconds later, you saw this big mama stick her head out and look at us and gave us this look like, don't you dare, you know, that, that bat, that bear was pissed off. But yeah. It's beautiful to watch them. It's cool when you can get out and walk around with them, but. Mm -hmm. Well, in Denali, they won't let you out. Within yeah, a mile it's of it. not safe with those grizzly bears. Yeah, yeah. I guess a week before, when we, right after we got there, just before we got there, some a bear mauled some hikers or something. Oh, some geez. hiker on the in Denali. So they can go like thirty miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can't run them. Yeah, in in Denali, there's no trees to uh, climb. You know, all, all the trees there are pretty small. They'll climb anyway, wouldn't they? Yeah, <laughs> and the grizzly bear will push it over if he wants yeah. it bad enough. Mm -hmm. mm, that's great. I want to plan a trip we were talking about. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. In, uh, it's like Vancouver area on the island there is so, Spirit Bear. The Spirit Bear, yeah. Yeah. Never been there. Now that Canada's open up again, we want to go over there. Is it? Yeah, we did, that's where we just were. We were up in the Arctic watershed. It was easy. We went, um, we drove up to the Sioux and then there's, I think it's Lake Superior State University or something like that, that um, they do rapid testing PCR. So we, we got in there and within 15 or 20 minutes, they gave us the results. And we were literally the only car on the bridge crossing the Sioux and um, it was funny because we got there, I think it like knew, well, we got out of the hotel at like 11 or noon and our appointment was at three o'clock. So we had a couple of few hours to kill. So we went, we did that Sioux locks tour, which is super cool. If you guys never did that, you actually go into the locks and they flood it. And, you know, you go through that, that whole experience. But I kept looking at the bridge thinking, Maya, this is not good. I haven't seen a single car go across the bridge. And I was worried that something happened, you know, that they that they closed it back up again. But then once we got tested, we got in like immediately. They didn't really ask us too much. When did you when did you get in? When was that? This was um oh about three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, because we, we were up for um, a couple of few weeks. Yeah, because they because it was open for a while and I think they did close it up again. I think I know. they did. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's I think it's closed now. I know Tom right. Callen's been over there, but he's Canadian. He's got Canadian citizenship too. So yeah, I thought yeah, it he still has to get recently. tested though. You know, but yeah, like coming back, crazy. there was nothing. You know, it was nobody. Yeah, it was Labor Day was the day that we came back actually. So okay, okay. Yeah, we were supposed to go to um, uh, Lisbon in November, and then Kenya, but now I, I think. Um, we can't get into um, Europe. I think they closed it for us. Sucks, but. We're a Jeremy Bunch. Yeah, yeah. Steve Gettle was just saying they came back from, just came back and they had these, some kind of self quick tests that they took. These someone yeah. just to witness it or something. And they said they had absolutely no problem going or coming. Well, when we went to um, so, Kyrgyzstan. To Kenya. A few months ago, we were in a um, couple months ago, anyways, in Kyrgyzstan and coming back. I know one of the women, she had some sort of a, a self-test thing that I guess you do it 
and then you have to go online. There's an app or something that you talk to the doctor that he reviews the results and, and they will accept that like a PCR test. But uh, we and actually they have, self, they have self tests. You just stick your Q-tip in, you stick it in this little folder thing. And then you like, wait one minute and it tells you and that tells you if you're um, contagious or not. Some of the um, some of so those tests, though, they won't accept them. In. They won't accept some of them. Yeah, they won't. Oh, they take won't them. accept some of them. Some of them they won't accept. Yeah. Mm. Like the ones you get at CVS and stuff like that, they won't accept that. Hey, Ron, uh, the Rainox that you were telling us about, would mm -hmm. that work on a fifty millimeter prime? Um, it, so long as it will clip on the front, yeah, it'll work. It, 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 you just. You have to look and see what um, diameter um, the lens will clip onto. Yeah, it's, it's a spring-loaded holder. It'll it'll yeah. cover quite a few uh, thread sizes. Okay, but hey, that's Bob. that's all that matters though is is that dimension. Hey. It'll work fine with it. Hey Bob, Bob, which one are you? The man, the myth, or the legend? All three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mike, the thing that's really cool about that is like, if you have, like I use a, a 90 millimeter um, macro and a 105, probably the most. And if like, let's say you're shooting like a, a dragonfly or something like that, right? And you can't necessarily get close to it. So if you've got the 105 on, you can go and you can shoot, shoot, shoot. And then if it lets you get closer, you can clip that thing on and, and get right on top of it and you're not, switching lenses so it, it's nice for stuff like that all right i'll give it a shot it's not that expensive you know so it's a lot of fun no yeah it won't work with my 82 millimeter i already looked at it mm. i was torturing the tree frogs with it yesterday mm -hmm. all right I wish I sent you guys some photos from Kyrgyzstan. I had some good ones and I didn't know about the meeting until today I saw the uh, the email, but- uh, What type of photos did you take? Oh man, we traveled virtually everywhere. And um, two of the guys were um, Nat Geo guys. So, so they had it, you know, like all of the locations and stuff were really thought through, you know, and. Um, we did a lot of a lot of street photography. Mainly, that's what I wanted. Was there's a book that I'm doing close up on Asia, so I wanted a lot of um, the traditional dress type people in the yurts and stuff like that. But we did um, quite a bit of um, hiking where we did a lot of landscape photography, and um, it was just absolutely beautiful. Just mountains. Next month, we need to share share some next month with us. Love yeah, I, I definitely will. I, I I haven't really gone through too many of them yet, but um, there's I had some nice ones. I, I love the kids. You know, we would get into these little villages, and the the kids they would see us, and it was like they saw you know somebody from the moon. They were so excited that you know they had Americans there and. Uh, Europeans, you know, from these other countries. And so they were really interested in us, you know, so all the people came and the kids were playing on the donkeys and whatever, you know, and the, it was really fun. Sounds great like experience. a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really neat. A tough trip, I'll tell you, but um, really nice. <laughs> Okay. Is that it for us tonight? Yep. Thanks, Doug, for fixing the website, the club website. Oh, yeah, it, you know, it was. It's, I, I changed it all at the beginning of the year, and I missed that one. Okay. There's okay. A, just one little button you got to click. Okay. And it was good for a couple of the things, but not the color and monochrome and nature was not. But the creative and assignment were all right. So they were already clicked, so. All right. Well, we'll see everybody in a month. Good seeing you guys. Yeah, yeah good seeing you. Bye. All righty. I'll post good the results, one. the video. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Good night, good Thanks, night everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Gary.